Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Angel of Death, John Rare. We are currently... Introducing the Angel of Death, John Rare. Yes, that is me. We are currently already joined by the Dangerous One, Cody Evans, and Biscuit himself, two of uh, Venom Championship Wrestling's and Alabama in general, up-and-comers here. Uh, how are you two doing, gentlemen? My bad. Man, doing pretty good. Just got finished eating. Everybody likes to eat. Who was that, Cody? Yeah, that's, that's me. Okay, I got I to I get used to y'all's voices on phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining our show tonight. Getting interviewed by the legend himself. Who, Shady Jane? <laughs> no, John Ray. Uh, let's not get started on that, because, uh, definitely not a legend. But I do got a, uh, trophy right here for Venom Championship Wrestling. <laughs> wasn't you the only one the first, or wasn't you the first to get a Venom Championship Wrestling trophy? Yes, that is true. I was the first to get it. Of course, I've been at almost every Venom show since he started, so, you know, hey, how about that? There you go. So uh, Cody yeah, and uh, still the man. Yeah, Cody and Biscuit. Uh, you know, this weekend we've got a new upcoming show. Uh, Venom Championship Wrestling presents Reloaded. Um, as of right now, you know the card is subject to change as always. But uh, Biscuit, you're scheduled for a tag team match as of right now, and on the opposite side of the ring, your former tag team partner Reaper. And over the last few months, or definitely this year, y'all had a little bit of a disagreement, breakup. What's going on with y'all? All I know, I'm ready for Friday to get here. I'm ready to get my hands on him again. As you know, at one of our last wrestling shows, uh, Showstopping, we was in a hardcore match, and I did get a little piece of him, even though Big Cody did take me out for the win. But... I I'm ready for it, and from my, my understanding, it's for the Tag Team Championship at Venom. And I'm finally getting to team up with Ra Ra. I've been wanting to team up with him since I come into the business. Ra Ra the Clown. Uh, me and him's actually never, I don't think we've ever been in the ring in general. We were actually supposed to have had a match, but I want to say that was the one that I could not make it to, actually. If I'm correct, something happened with our match. But the the dangerous one, Cody Evans, uh, you have a, a scheduled big match. You know, I say scheduled because su card subject is always uh, to change. And the show that I am talking about is this Friday night in Cropwell, Alabama at the Celebrations Home. Uh, you'll want to get there around 7 o'clock, I believe. The doors open at 7, show starts at 8. Going to be a really good show. Uh, Cody Evans, you've got your hardest task to date is if the card stays the same, and that will be J-Blade. That's, uh, that's a hell of a match. Oh, yeah, man. That's, that's going to be a big one. That's going to definitely be a test for me. Uh He's Thank you, got, I don't know, man. <laughs> he's, he's got it. He's got a lot that I don't think I can handle. But you know, I'm not gonna back down. I'm just gonna give it everything I got. I've I've personally been in there with him. Uh, one let's see, one time, yes, and it was a casket match at Showstopping Championship Wrestling, and definitely took me to my limit. A smooth and great worker. You will definitely enjoy working him. Uh, quick as all get out so you know put your running shoes on uh if i can jump back to biscuit right now i know one of the questions that was asked earlier uh before we ever started online was biscuit how'd you get the name uh actually the promoter of venom championship wrestling when i come into the business i was gonna have another partner and we was gonna be called biscuit biscuit and gravy yeah. That's why at every show I wear my biscuit and gravy shirt. But it's just biscuit now. Oh. So so if as long as they're paying attention, that's uh, where he got his name at, people. He was originally going to be a tag team, biscuits and gravy. Now, I, you know this, this was going to get brought up, Cody. Uh, very controversial. 
but I don't think uh, we've really ever talked about it on uh, on my channel. I'm not even sure if you've talked about it in general, but would you like to talk about the glitch? We can't uh, <clears throat> there ain't much to really say about it. You know, accidents, they do happen in this sport, but I think that one was kind of, they was putting me over, but I think it was going to kind of be like a thing for failures also to go along with it. Yeah. Like, you know, it, ha it, it happens in the business 100%. Me, right, as a, as a masked wrestler, of course, early on, but it was still me either like way. my eyes right where they're at. Oh, sorry. Uh, we had questions coming in. It's getting crazy on the uh, TikTok side. But, uh, yes, I was in a match before with <laughs> Phil Payne and Big Daddy Buck. And let me tell you, like, you know, you got stuck in a glitch for maybe 30 seconds to a minute. Our whole match was very glitched, I'll say that. And, you know... To this day, me and Phil can go back and rewatch it, and all we do is laugh at it because we're like, "How was it that bad?" But you know, hey, it happens to everybody. It's you know, I know it blew up on the internet. It blew up on what the cheap heat radio. Uh, it obviously blew up with the other individual involved. But you know, hey, move past it. This is going to be a huge weekend for you. That's Venom Championship Reloaded. Uh, Obviously, there's going to be a lot more people there. We're only going to talk about the ones that are involved. I do need to give uh, the other individual, Lawless. Okay, wait a minute. I think Barrett's in here now. Hey, guys. There he is. Okay. Yeah, he's we got all three of in here. Yeah, I was just about to call you there, uh, Barrett. Yeah, I had to finish eating my supper that was late because of the door dash. You know, that's actually a really good question about door dashers. How do you feel about a door dasher? Well, uh, I did it for a little bit, but I didn't really particularly like it because you're in charge of everybody's food. And you know how people get about their food. Yes, and we actually have a local door dasher here in this area that I absolutely love. She's beautiful. I want to marry her again. I'm talking about my wife here, people. Yes. <laughs> so, Lawless, we've been talking about uh, this weekend, Venom Championship Wrestling. Of course, card subject to change, but me and you will face off for the first time ever. Um, what are your thoughts on, you know, our match in general? Uh, well, I know, based off your history, that it could get a little rough and it could get a little violent, but... I'm going to bring my A game this Friday, and we're just going to see if it's enough to beat you. Like, it is. Like, as I mentioned before, I believe... Oh, wait a minute. Okay, guys, thank you. We hit our live goal twice now. Keep up the good work. If I hit the live goal this time on the pizzas, I get 20 of the gift pizzas. I will chop John Rare right here live. Okay. Hit, them, hit that goal, guys. There's 20 pizzas. You can do it. Continue. So we've already hit a we've already hit a goal twice, and we've only been live for like ten minutes. So that's that's really 2. good. Two point eight thousand likes. Damn, two point. Yeah. How many? Two point eight thousand likes. Two point eight thousand likes mm. already. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Uh, come, guys. Yeah, that's crazy <laughs> already. But uh, yeah, definitely, Barrett. Um, like I said, I was I've been watching you obviously for a while. Hell, I filmed I don't know countless matches of you over the years. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, you know, I've definitely had my eye on you for a while, and I've only seen improvement out of you, over, the, especially over this last year. Like, and, you know, obviously, I don't get in the ring with too many new people, but, uh, you know, since I've retired the last time, holy hell, I guess people want me to get chopped, I guess. <laughs> but uh, We hit the goal for the third time, and we are at 3,000 likes right now, guys. Keep them coming in. We're here with Biscuit, Barrett, and... The Dangerous One, Cody the, Evans. Dangerous One, Cody Evans. Yeah, our likes are coming in like crazy, guys. We Apparently, hit so what? Chop? Lift your shirt up. Okay, okay, guys, hold on one minute. We wife gets chop. Wife gets the, the chop. Ready? 
Oh, oh go ahead. That's sort of like a good one. Well, here, go, let's go ahead and do it one for every person, so you get two more. I know you like this. Because you hit the live goal three times. We'll do it one more yeah. time, guys. Come on. Go ahead and do it one more. Oh my God. Come on, just do it. Um, now I think we turn this totally wrong on live here. Oh, I'm sorry. Sure sorry. Down. My bad, my bad. I, I get in those. <laughs> my bad, people. Sorry. We have been, I gave you some chops and they loved it. The, the likes are going through the roof. Oh, Lord. They are. Okay, thank you. Apparently, someone on TikTok loves one of you three because this is already more than what we've had the last few times. They're lighting the gifts up and everything. Okay, so that's good. Uh, Cody, what? Uh, I'll go to you. Well, let me, what can I tell you? Everybody loves some biscuit. Apparently, <laughs> somebody loves somebody because... I was, I was about to say it's all courtesy of me because y'all finally got a real star on here. Yeah. <laughs> right, but everybody loves the big boy, though. <laughs> okay, so... Are you talking about biscuit? I ain't no skinny dude now. I'm talking about me. So, Biscuit, last yeah. time... Last time you were in the ring with a lar rather large fellow, Big Andy, and uh, that was a, a pretty physical damn match. The uh, slaps there, did it did it give you uh, uh, did you remember the slap fights once you got involved in that? Holy! To be honest with you, I, that's the nervous I ever been inside the wrestling ring. But I was proud of myself because I accomplished my fear, and I'm not scared to get back in the ring with him again. Oh yeah. And everybody that's watching this interview. With anybody in this business. Yeah, anybody no. that's watching this, any of the matches that we're discuss discussing, all you have to do is go to my channel, John Rare, and uh, look in the playlist for Venom Championship Wrestling, and you will see any of the matches that these gentlemen are talking about when it comes to Venom Championship Wrestling. We also have a playlist for Show Stopping Championship Wrestling, which also has these three gentlemen and myself. Our matches are all there, so please come check out the matches. Uh, like I said, Biscuit, last time you were in there with a huge individual, uh, Biscuit, last time you were in, I mean, uh, sorry, Cody, you were in a tag match the last time, so it was a little bit more chaotic. You know, you didn't have a, a lot of time to do your dominance and shine in that one, but hopefully this time you can uh, basically put the whole platform for the audience there for yourself and show out and, you know, show everybody what you are capable of. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Being in a tag match for me is just, it's no, it's no fun to sit there and have to wait. Uh, uh, Barrett, now Barrett, last time your match well, obviously was the uh, the big one. It was the uh, four way with Blaine Evans, Jay Blade, and the tattooed wrestler himself, Brian White, all Deep South, you know, aligned wrestlers. And you pulled out a huge victory there. Probably one. Would you consider that uh, your best match ever? Uh, yeah. Besides the one I'll have with you this Friday, yeah. All That'd right. probably be my best match to date. Um, those three guys really are fantastic workers. Um, I wouldn't mind working them again. Uh, they really, you know, brought out the best in me, and they pushed me to my limit, that's for sure. But, you know, the lawless one always comes out on top, and I proved that at the last show. So Now, the CEO of Venom Championship Wrestling said that Big Andy will definitely be there this Friday night as well. Uh, we do not have a match listing for him as of right now, but ch card subject is ch to change at all time. Uh, I did not call Biscuit Bisquicks. What is Bisquicks? Is that the mixture? It's pancake mix. Pancake mix. Okay, yeah, I didn't call him that. If I did, my bad. We all we we've got questions coming in on the screen that we relay to y'all or whatever they're saying. So, and we are doing really good. We are almost at five thousand likes in sixteen minutes. So that's rather good, gentlemen. We're hitting our live go for the fifth time tonight. Um, the gifts are coming in. The views are skyrocketing right now, guys. Keep it going. Now let's uh, we're talking about Venom and where we're at now, but let's go ahead and get us to. 
what what made y'all want to get in the business in general? Let's start with you, Biscuit. Uh, uh, what was the one match that you watched that made you think to yourself, I want to get in that wrestling ring? It, it was probably maybe five years ago going to IWA, Deep South Wrestling. I've always liked them. And I've always, I've always wanted to get in the ring. And then the promoter of Venom Championship Wrestling gave me my first shot, and I've been doing it ever since. Hell yeah. Actually, I've actually been in the business for a year now. Now, as of right now, with you being in the business for a year, who's like the one person that you would consider a dream match as of right now? Dream match? It'd probably be the tattooed wrestler, Brian. The tattooed... That would be my dream. The Tattooed Wrestler. The Tattooed Wrestler, Brian White. And he will actually be on the show next Sunday as With well. his wife, so she can tell her side of the story, a wife supporting their indie wrestlers. So that's next week's episode, people, just to, just to let you know. Uh, I, look up, I look up to the Tattooed Wrestler. If I ever need any advice, he's one of the first pe person I call. And he's a good individual. He's a, he's a great kid. You know, he's... He's always, uh, we, we hit the goal again, apparently. But yeah, Tattooed Wrestler is awesome. Uh, they'll be on next weekend. So definitely a good person to uh, ask questions with. So Cody, same question for you. What is the one match that you watched that made you want to get into this business? Man, I'll be honest with you. I, there's, there's so many, I can't even... Think of an exact one. So, who would you uh, consider your favorite wrestler? My favorite wrestler, Indy or uh, yeah, do Indy. Indy, I would definitely have to say either you got you, probably Brian Watt, and uh, Jay Blade. Jay Blade is awesome. Originally, Jay Blade was supposed to be on the uh, the episode tonight, but he had something come up. So that yeah, is. Yeah. Do you hear that? What is that? I hear you. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I was hearing something yeah. weird there. Okay, so the lawless one, James Barrett. Same question. We may have already talked about this before, actually, but maybe not on this interview, of course. Uh. What got you into the business? Uh, well, I've, I've been watching wrestling since I was about five years old on television. And the first match that really caught my eye, and it featured my favorite wrestler of all time, it was Undertaker versus Kane in a Buried Alive match back in 2001. And ever since then, I haven't stopped watching it. And I found out about indie wrestling and... You know, got into it myself, and now I'm on the on the right track to getting to where I want to be, which is on Raw or SmackDown. Yeah. I was actually scheduled at one point to be in a Buried Alive match, but it never happened. It was a it was a match with me and Spider, but it was just it never came uh you know came to light we was, we had everything planned out of it but it just didn't happen and I, I thought it was going to be cool to do it but yeah that undertaker was an amazing athlete when you go back and watch him you know when people consider the greatest characters of all time and i'm not i'm not saying the greatest wrestlers of all time but the greatest characters of all time undertaker's got to be number 1 like i don't think there's even a uh yeah. comparison there's to number debate. 2 yeah, there's no debate, no question about it. That's that man had the best character ever. Yeah, like of all time. Baker is definitely the go. And he, I gotta agree with all y'all on that. And yeah. you know, he I lived grew it. Up watching Undertaker. Yeah, yeah, and he well, lived. You know, he lived the character. That's who he was. And you know, mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna talk about Venom for this first uh, half. We've got a few more minutes to talk about that, and then we're gonna swap over to the other subjects. But uh, so Venom Championship Wrestling will 
go here on this one. Uh, Biscuit, what is your long-term goal in the place where you started Venom Championship Wrestling? My long-term goal is to be the Venom Heavyweight Champion. That's my goal. Currently held by one Extreme Heat. Cody Evans, same question for you. What is your long-term goal for your career at Venom Championship Wrestling? Hey, just like everybody else, is become champion and then just keep on climbing the ladder and make it to maybe television one day. Just keep working and get to the top. Now, Barrett, currently you are a champion here at Venom Championship Wrestling, so I guess the next step for you would be to get another title, correct? I'm going to get all the gold, John. <laughs> I'm going to get all of it. I'm going to be Barrett four belts, <laughs> six belts, or 12 belts. Now, we're going we're gonna to talk uh, yeah, about my, this. My goal is to get another championship and, and become the... I guess become the face of this this promotion. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Be the be the top guy. And it's the same as everybody else's. I mean, everybody wants to be the top guy, so it's all about who wants it more. And you know. And trust me, where it's Venom challenge. Championship is at now is way better than where it started from. And I know, I, I think you were at a few of them, Barrett. You know, they used to be yeah, in gar garages. You know, like car garages, they've been in some bad venues before, you know, and it's 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 leveling up each time, and you know, last show was probably one of the best shows ever for Venom Championship Wrestling, and now Reloaded, we're coming back with a lot of the same people, and uh, you know, it's definitely time to step up for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely elevated from when I first started with, with the company. Um, like you said, we was doing garages and outside shows in front of like five, ten people maybe, or twenty at most, you know. And then now we're getting like sixty, seventy on average. I mean, it's pretty, it, you know, it's pretty good. It certainly came a long way from where it started, and you know, I'm glad I stuck with it. And then, and then on top of it, I think I, I don't hold me to it, but I'm like ninety nine percent sure that I was right, I'm right on this, that I was the first two-time Venom Championship Wrestling, but obviously now there are other ones that I think has become the multiple-time Venom Champion, and including like Greg Dodson. Uh, and where, where are you at, Greg? Get back in the business. I don't know if you guys remember Greg, but man, he used to be you know Venom Champion for a while, and dude would put on classics every week with Mike Jackson. Yeah. Now, I remember got... it. Oh, say that again? I said I remember it. Now, I, I just don't know. I, know. I know he had surgery or something on his knee, and maybe that's why he's been down and still ain't back. I need to reach out to him, see see what's up with him. But, you know, he he constantly play, uh, had great matches. Like, when I, if I was to take, you know, what, to, to say the top 20 people that I know and put them on a show... Greg would be on that show because, you know, he's just a great performer. Now, let's see. Where are we at right now? We've got uh, roughly 12 minutes before the... No, not minutes. We have uh, seven minutes. Seven minutes. Till the next show starts. We do... Yeah, okay. Dude, let's do Q&A real quick. Uh, some of the fans send in some questions. For Venom Championship, that's going to be in Cropwell, Alabama this Friday night. And then we will go on to the next uh, half of the show. Okay. Um, we've got a Sam and Colby fan here. I don't know what... what, what Sam is and Colby fan. You know Sam and Kobe awesome. there? No, I love Sam and Colby, man. I watched their, all their ghost hunting videos. I've seen all of them. I'm waiting on them to release the Conjuring episode. They spent a week in the Conjuring house. 
Well, you know, Kobe wanted to join in a few weeks, but we really don't have nothing for him right now. But we, we'll see what we can do. No? Okay, well, yeah, we can't do it yet. Okay. My sister-in-law is actually a huge fan of them, so. Yeah, I've watched every one of their videos, man. They make after some stuff on their ghost hunting Let's see. The CEO of Venom said that John Rare is correct. So, I'm always correct, guys. Thank you. Two-time champion here. The first Hall of Famer. And I actually owe it. To all of uh, the other wrestlers, not myself. <laughs> Where the hell's all the Q and A at? Okay. Barrett, what what would you consider your worst match? Red Solo Cup, because um, I, I don't, I don't know if he was was scared to sell moves or what, but man, he just could not sell any of any of the moves that I did to him, and it was really irritating. Red Solo has always been a uh, special type of worker. Uh, we've never worked. As a matter of fact, I think he's always uh, emphasis on special. Yeah, emphasis on special. <laughs> Dewberry. <laughs> he was the only person I've ever seen get mad because he couldn't ref his own match. I mean, come on, dude. How you gonna ref your own match? I mean, <laughs> how, you, how does that even come about? Like, he could have rolled under the ring. Count yourself. He could have got under the ring and put the shirt on, went in and finished the match. I don't know. Nobody really knows what Dewberry's doing. That's why he has. Zero creative control. Yeah. All right, this is uh, this will be one for all three of you to answer, and then we'll try to move on to the next half. What is y'all's opinion on backyard wrestling? We're actually talking about real backyard wrestling, not the indies doing backyard. Because, you know, that's obviously a thing now. It's cheaper for indies to go out there and record, uh, you know, their shows in a backyard and put them on YouTube than it is to rent venues anymore. But actual backyard wrestling, what is y'all's opinions on that? We'll start with you, Biscuit. I've a, I actually done that when I was younger, backyard wrestling. I, I have so, myself, so. And Shady. So, it's, it's hard for me to judge because I've done it, and if that's how they want to get their name out for, Go for it. Yeah, I, I agree with it. Like like I said, I, I did it for years, and I've never been quiet about it. Everybody knows from 2000 till almost 20, I think 2010 or 2011, and if you, uh, if you match up the years, I was doing indie wrestling and doing backyard wrestling at the same damn time. So... I kept, you know, I kept going doing that on Sundays whenever I'd be wrestling on Friday and Saturdays. And we also have, you know, a backyard wrestler listening in on the live, and he did damn good at it. His name, he went by multiple names, but uh, Bate, uh, El Fergo, or what was it, El Fergo? El Flego? <laughs> Something like that. Uh, Oh, my, my uh, brother-in-law. But, okay, uh, Cody, what's your opinion on the backyard? Really? It's, you know, I know it's somewhat frowned upon, but hey, as long as you're being careful, and it makes interesting content. <laughs> yes. Now, Barrett, uh, what about you? Um, I've never really uh, been into the backyard wrestling, but like Cody said, I mean, you know, if that's, that's what they want to do, just be careful about it and uh, just keep doing what they're doing. That's, that's how they get their name out there. Like Biscuit said, you know, everybody's got to start somewhere, you know? Yeah, because, you know, originally, I mean, I can say it because I was in that uh, boat where... 
me and Shady here were doing backyard wrestling, and it was in 2007. I actually think it was like literally the first week of 2007, the guys from Real TV came out there, interrupted our award show, but they came out there and wanted to record. So we put on basically a, a second show that day just for them. And, uh, you know, after that, that's when, you know, my character got a little internet famous. And obviously I started getting into indie wrestling training. And that's how I, you know, got my name out of there. So we are yeah. getting ready to blow up on the second show. Here's Shady. All right. Um, before we end with that, too, as well, um, for my followers who don't understand, indie wrestling and uh, backyard wrestling, it's been kind of a fuel. There's good points on both sides. Like Indian re indie wrestling, you've got um, these guys actually spend time and money and effort um, in training and do what they do best to do it safe way. Whereas, you know, in the backyard, um, it's all, you know, let's just go, let's do it, see what happens. Um, you don't take that extra precaution because they live life on the edge kind of people. Um, and so that is the kind of beat back and forth. And as a backyard wrestler, when indie, when guys became big up in the indies, I looked at them as um, their sellouts, you know. Um, they, you know, they're going to go make money or what money that, you know, back in the day I thought they made tons of money, you know. But these wrestlers, they go for, you know, little pay, very little pay to do what they love, but yet spend more money into the training of being where they're at. So you got to look at it from both perspectives um, and see why both are, are fueling. But then you got uh, the wrestlers like the new upcoming generation um, talking about, you know, it don't matter if you're backyard, just as long as you do it safely, but they would prefer this way, you know. So um, we're going to end off on this half of it, and we'll start the beginning half with John Rare discussing um, some WWE stuff. All right, well, this is the Angel of Death. We are back. If you didn't tune in for the first interview, maybe this is actually still the first interview. I don't know. I think we're going to go to 33 before it clicks over on my camera. But, gentlemen, what we are going to be discussing on this upcoming interview will be the CM Punk situation, AEW All Out and All In, and this weekend's, actually last night, Payback, how much of a classic it was. Uh, hopefully you three watched it. I hope. <laughs> oh yeah, I did. Uh, I hadn't had time. Oh, we'll see. That's good. Uh, to if, be honest with you, I was watching football. Well, see, I was watching football too, but trust me, I've, I had multiple screens open. I had I had the TV going, and I had two phones going. So, as you know, guys, I am from Alabama, and that's why we are discussing football. <laughs> Yes, we are the South. <laughs> Charter tried to take our football away because they don't want to pay. Uh, well, actually, I think it's Disney wanted to take football away because they went up on their prices. It's a uh, kabobble. I don't know if that's the way it is with y'all, gentlemen. It is. But. Yeah, they took it. I don't have that channel no more. 